All right, in this set of notes, we're going to talk about meiosis. So this is another type of division besides mitosis that is going to result in daughter cells. We will have two divisions that are happening instead of one, like we saw in mitosis. So we start with a little baby cell here that enters the G1 stage, and then the DNA is replicated once the signal is received, and then the cell prepares for, for the cell division and enters the meiotic stages. So there's meiosis 1 where you get two daughter cells, and then those two daughter cells are going to divide one more time, and therefore um, there will be a total of four cells that form. So these are the products of meiosis. So when we say meiosis is happening, we are referring to somatic cells that are going to be dividing to produce gametes. Somatic cells, all your body cells, are going to contain homologous chromosomes. And then again, we have a paternal chromosome, and then we have a maternal chromosome. These chromosomes will come together during meiosis. And uh, there will be a very special event that takes place, which is crossing over to increase genetic variation. If an organism has both dominant genes, so we say that organism is homozygous dominant for that trait, and you can see both maternal and paternal chromosomes carried those dominant genes. Or a person could be homozygous recessive for a particular trait, because both parents contributed recessive alleles. One is dominant, one is recessive. We would identify this organism as heterozygous for that particular trait. So what we can do also with homologous chromosomes, we can put them together in pairs and we can stain them and then we can count them and produce a picture of chromosomes and we call that karyotype. And then by counting and observing these chromosomes, we can detect chromosomal abnormalities and also determine the gender of a person. Another type of cells would be the reproductive cells. So this is what we get as a result of meiosis. So we have sperm and egg, and these cells would be haploid. The notation is little n, and they only have a single set of chromosomes. So in the case of humans, um, sperm would carry a uh, the sperm would carry 23 chromosomes, and the egg would carry 23 chromosomes. And then those two would fuse during the process of fertilization, and we restore that number into 46, and we make a diploid cell. So this diploid cell is now called a zygote and it's ready to divide by mitosis and produce more cells and that's how an organism is going to grow. So meiosis involves all sexual life cycles. So if you look at different organisms, what will we see, fungi, plants, animals, they will all have meiosis take place at some point. Um, now one thing that I wanted to point out that students have misconception on um, there's this understanding that meiosis always gives rise to gametes. However, that's not necessarily true because if we look at fungi or even plants, meiosis, you can see this is a zygote, this is a diploid cell, and you can see meiosis is giving rise to spores. So spores are haploid. So these spores will mature into an organism, so an organism will grow, it's going to be all haploid, and then this mature organism will produce haploid gametes, which are going to be male and female, and those later can fuse during the process of fertilization and restore that number into a diploid state. So you can see fungi actually are mainly haploid, but if you look at animals, all their body cells are diploid. Animals will undergo meiosis, they will undergo meiosis to produce gametes, so spores versus gametes. You guys remember the cell cycle from the previous unit. All these phases, as I, mentioned, as I mentioned before, still exist, and the cells are going to follow all the cell cycle regulators. At some point before the S phase, chromosomes look like this, so these are individual chromosomes. And um, here they are replicated because each chromosome now made up of two sister chromatids. So here's the very first stage, we call that prophase 1. This happens after the G2 stage of interphase. So chromatin is going to condense, so chromosomes become visible, and we can actually count them. We know this is a diploid cell, 2N, and in this case, the cell has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 chromosomes. Okay, and you can see them here, and you can see spindle fibers are forming, and then crossing over is going to be taking place. 
Why? Because chrom uh, homologous chromosomes are going to pair up. They will come together. They will form a tetrad. There will be a protein complex that's going to be laid down between those homologous chromosomes. And these homologous chromosomes, specifically non-sister chromatids, are going to exchange pieces of their genetic material. So now we can call these chromosomes recombinant chromosomes because genes have shuffled. And how do we know the crossing over takes place? We can actually see it. We can see what we call a chiasma. So there's going to be this X-shaped region of crossing over. So what they do next, those homologous chromosomes, tetrads still together, they're going to be arranged across the equatorial plate and homologous chromosomes are going to be separated. And then the end result of telophase and cytokinesis, we get two cells from one. So here's one cell, here's another cell. So you can see it's splitting in half. This is an animal cell because we see the formation of cleavage furrow. But what happened to the number of chromosomes? So remember we started with six and we counted them here. But now if we go back and see in each cell, now we have one, two, three, one, two, three. So it means we have three chromosomes here and three chromosomes here. So it means we have reduced the chromosome number in half. So at the end of telophase one, cytokinesis one, the number of chromosomes is reduced in half. However, we cannot stop here because if you look at each individual chromosome, you're going to see that it's still a duplicated chromosome. It looks like this. So let's say I had a gene here, that's A. I have a gene here also that's A, so it means they're identical. And gametes should not have both of these genes in one cell. You should only have one version of each gene, meaning one allele. So therefore, we go on and we do meiosis II. So meiosis II, before you start meiosis II, there will be an interphase II. However, interphase II will have no DNA replication that will happen. So remember, no DNA replication. There is no need to, to replicate DNA because it's already double. So, and then chromatin in interphase, uh, when you have the interphase two, the chromatin eventually will start to condense in prophase two. And you can see those chromosomes are now visible again. And then spindle fibers will form and arrange these chromosomes across the equatorial plate. So you can see now chromosomes line up just like just like they did in mitosis. You see it's a, a single line. So now the goal is to basically separate these sister chromatids. The result, the product would be one, two, three, four cells that resulted. See, they all are genetically different. So meiosis in, in males is called spermatogenesis, and that's how the sperm, are, sperm cells are produced. And this is all happening inside the testes, and then you can see how sperm matures, gets rid of most of the cytoplasm, so that way they can um, efficiently deliver the genetic content to, to the egg. Meiosis in females is referred to as oogenesis, so the diploid cells will divide by meiosis and eventually produce an egg. So you actually make four cells, but notice there is uneven division of the cytoplasm. So you make one big cell and then three little bitty cells. These are called polar bodies and your body will degrade them. But this one larger cell will mature into an egg. And then, of course, the egg is going to be released um, during ovulation. And if it's not fertilized, it is going to be broken down. So here's a table that compares mitosis and meiosis. I would say spend some time here. And in the next set of slides, I will talk about how we increase genetic diversity in gametes.